Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little Ladies and gentlemen, from Denver, Colorado, I have Who Ride. What up, man? What's up, Dusty? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm good, man. Appreciate you joining the show, dude. Already, I appreciate you for having me on here. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've interviewed a lot of cats from, all, you know, all over the country. Uh, but uh, Denver is, is one that I have never um, spoke to anyone from. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting to know you, getting to know uh, your city and your upbringing and things like that. Tell everybody where you grew up. I grew up in Denver, Colorado. Um, our hospital was called, I was born in Denver General. Now, now they call it Denver Health. Um, but yeah, I was born in Denver, Colorado, um, grew up, um, between the East side and Park Hill. Okay. But I grew up in Park Hill. Actually, my parents stayed in Park Hill, but once, um, I started running around with the streets and hanging with the Crips, I hung on the East side. I pretty much didn't hang around to Park Hill too much. Gotcha. Gotcha. And what was your upbringing like? Mom around, dad around? My mom was been around, um... And I say my pops, man, my the, the the fella my mom is married to, he's been with my mom since I was six years old. I'm 45, so that is my dad. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what's up. I love hearing stuff like that, man. That's cool. Um, now, to the best of your knowledge, before Season B's even made it to Denver, who were some of the gangs that were running around the city? I don't really... <clears throat> Well, I would say I wouldn't even call them gangs because they didn't call themselves gangs. So we had, I would say, that I can remember. So in Park Hill, you had the B-O-Y-Zs. Um, across Carl Boulevard on the east side, you had the Brick City. And that that's what just was the split. We didn't have – Denver, man, Denver is, is, is so small. If you gang bang, I wouldn't care from – this side of the city to the other side, you 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 know everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, it's very small. Okay, and it was more like crews. It sounds like or just side of town, basically. Y'all from this side of the town, and they're from that side of the town type deal. For the most part, but and so now every like and this and I know it's probably going to make a few people frustrated when they hear. But in Denver, you don't know, any. Anybody claiming a West Side Crip gang from Colorado, and no disrespect to them, because I got some homeboys that claim, you know, West Side from they Raymond, some Gears, but we don't have West Side Crips in Denver. Anybody hanging on the West Side in Denver is Hispanic or Asian. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, um, to the best of your – well, let me ask you, when was the first time you personally heard anything about Crips and Bloods? I would say maybe I was hmm, maybe about 11, 10, 11 years old. I used to play basketball um, for the Red Shield Salvation Army as a community center on the east side. Um, and the east side is where the Crips, well, you know, the Crips are originated at. The, the original Crips from Denver originated on the east side. So I would hear cuz and see the blue and things of that nature, but – but again, like I said, I was 10, 11 years old playing basketball, and that was it. You know what I mean? Um, um, I, I I guess I would say I noticed the floods around seventh grade, I would say, because um, I went to a school that was predominantly blood, so um, junior high school. So, yeah, that's what I, say. I would say that I, I could really say that I knew – got to hearing the blood or you know what I mean Mm -hmm. okay and who are some of the specific sets that you kind of remember hearing back in the day back then as far as the the Crips or the blood either way you know all around I would love to hear you know all okay so so back then like when I say original like I'm from I'm from Trey Trey Gangsters that's um east side Denver east side Trey Trey Gangsta Crip the 30s the Trey Trey's um, I would say the Trey Deuces and the Trey Foes. Those are original Denver East Side Crips. And I ain't going to leave out the Dog Cities either because the Dog Cities, they from the East Side and they've been on the East Side for their original East Siders. Those are the original East Side Crip gangs in Denver. And 
across the track, which which what separates our the the Crips and the Bloods here is a street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Colorado Boulevard is just a street that runs north and south. So on, on the east side of Colorado Boulevard is Park Hill, which is blood ter- blood neighborhood. On the west side of Carl Boulevard is what we call the east side, and that's where the Crips, the east side Crips, hang and are originated from. So back then, growing up, the first uh, blood says I would say I heard from was um, CMG and Deuce Nine Family. Deuce Nine Family is an original Denver blood gang. CMG they, Crenshaw they, Mafia, right? The other yeah, Cr- mm-hmm. Crenshaw Mafia is is like the biggest blood neighborhood in Park Hill. Okay. Okay. And you said uh, Deuce Nine was a, a homegrown. Deuce Nine is a homegrown blood neighborhood up there. Yep. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, shit, man, take me back to the day that you decided to to join Crip. So I would say I was maybe about 13, um, kind of on some um, wannabe type stuff. You know what I'm saying? I would I would leave my mom's house going to school one way, and this is seventh grade, um, seventh, eighth grade. I would leave my mom's house dressed a certain way, but when I got on the school bus, I had a whole different outfit in my backpack, a blue dicky suit. So you know what I'm saying? I, then I started getting into conflicts with the Bloods because, like I said, my mom stays in Park Hill, has always stayed in Park Hill. I mean, I've stayed on the east side as a kid, kid, a baby boy, but memories that I can remember have all, like, living have come from Park Hill. Um, so the junior high school I went to, it was called Gold Middle School. Um, it was on Colorado Boulevard. Um, and then, like, again, told you earlier, more more so Bloods went to that school because a lot of kids that were – we got bused to school back then. So the majority of the kids that went to Gold came from Park Hill. Um, it was just something about me being at the Red Shield and being playing basketball down there, and I, I, I started to know some of the dudes down there. Um I, I I guess that's why I really picked that side. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. My after eighth grade junior high school year was up. The summer the summer after eighth grade eighth grade year is when I got quoted to my neighborhood. So going into ninth grade is when I started running with the Crips, which would be nineteen eighty nine ninety. Okay. And if any if it's anything like L A. where I live, eighty nine and ninety was on fire and the streets were just crazy. Man, I've, been, I've been shot four times, brother. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And crazy thing is like, um, you know, like we way smaller than California. I've been out there seeing the, the Jordan downs and all that. I was kind of fascinated just to see all the purple, all them dudes. I'm like, damn, but I'm looking like, it look just like my homeboys, just mm-hmm. a whole bunch more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that's it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, early early 90s and stuff, some of the different little California sets start coming out here. Um, you know, probably for the, you know, for the little hustle or whatever the case it may be, running from something or whatever the case it may be. But that's when we first kind of, <clears throat> like, got a taste of some of the California Crips. And I think even in Park Hill, some of the Damus up there got a taste of them cats coming from there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, back then it was rough. <laughs> it, it, it was rough, you know, um, shit, we got into it. We got into it with every California set that did come out here to crit wise <laughs> straight up. Cause it's like, you know, you, I would, it don't matter where you come from or where you at. You can't go in nobody else's neighborhood, set up shop, think you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And it ain't going to be no situation. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't give a damn what city or state you in. You feel me? Growing up, you think, ah, uh, we, we Crips, we hard, this, that, and the other. This stuff is like, 
and, and to me, and I know a lot of my partners be frustrated. This is some of the bogus shit I've ever done in my life. <laughs> it was running the streets with some dudes, man, on some nonsense. I don't want anybody to ever think that I'm that I'm glorifying any of this life, man. My man, That's me neither. Cause yeah, it's tough. yeah, my dude. Time you know in the feds. Saying? I mean, you, you you've been shot four times. I mean, kids, this is not something you know what i'm saying that 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 you did that you want to do so you know what i'm saying i'm, I'm glad i have you on here to you know what I'm saying share your story but um yeah you know what actually I, I would love to um to dabble into your um your life in prison if you don't mind because that's one of my main things i'm really trying to do is deter kids unfortunately Understood. yeah unfortunately there's someone listening right now who no matter what you tell him he will be in prison or jail in Absolutely. two or three years you know what i mean so if i could just change <laughs> one person you know what I'm saying? I can die. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. I did my Absolutely. job. Absolutely. Um, Understood. Yeah, yeah. But let me let me ask you how many. If you, could, if you could put a number on it, how many years would you say you gave to the Man, system? I didn't. I I I'm gonna say the most. And I've been to the penitentiary three different times. I've done no more than I would say behind bars. Um, three years. It's like the way our penal system out here is. You know, the feds everywhere is the same. You pretty much in the feds, you're gonna pretty much do all your time yeah. in the state out here. You don't, I had a drug charge. I had a possession of crack cocaine in 1999. I got a four year deferred sentence. I'm, I'm out, I'm out, I'm living. I'm still hanging with the homies doing my thing, blah, 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 blah whatever. Um, playing dominoes in the backyard with some of my homeboys one day, gang unit rushed up in the backyard, super, you know, boom, boom, whatever. Um, a couple of my partners ran in the crib. Um, Shit, from there, we all went to jail. You know what I'm saying? Um, they found a couple pistols, some um, some dope, some hard, and that kicked out my deferred. Only thing that really saved me from getting some more time was when the police, when the gang unit kicked in my door, they were on the radio, and the dispatch lady was telling them if they didn't have a warrant not to go in my house. They had already pulled the iron screen off and kicked the door in. You know what I'm saying? So that helped me. So my deferred was just wiped away, and I got a four-year sentence. Mm. I did 11 months in the penitentiary on a four-year sentence, and the rest was um, maybe six months, maybe six months halfway house, three or four months ankle bracelet, and then I went on parole. Mm. Crazy thing about this, the day I went on parole, the day I made parole, we were hanging at one of the little neighborhood, little um, bar, eatery joints, whatever you want to call it, um, some nonsense kick off at the bar um, outside. A fella gets shot. Boom, boom, boom. Police say they see me. They take, uh, snatch me up, take me to jail. Boom, 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 boom. I know if I don't hurry up and bond out of jail, my parole officer is going to have me sitting in here. I'm not going to get out of jail for a while. So I hurry up and bond out before um, the hole popped up on me. You know what I'm saying? So I got out, um, whatever. Monday morning, she's calling the job I'm working at saying that she needed to see me. So when I returned her call, you know, I told her I would be in. I didn't go in. She called me back, said, when was I coming? I talked real crazy to her, told her I'm not coming. Leave me the fuck alone. See me when you see me. But during this whole time, I never did not go to court. I went to court, you know, the initial time when I bonded out, I went to court, boom. I'm thinking I'm going to get snatched up then just because I'm at court. Didn't happen. The next time I went to court, I knew it was going to happen because it was in the main courthouse, not at the little jail building. You know what I'm saying? So the lady sat me in jail that time for maybe, um, I would say maybe 18 months because I was fighting an attempted murder charge for the little dumb shooting over there. And um, I, I took the little stuff to trial. She sat me in the penitentiary the whole time. The DA played with me for maybe nine months, 12 months on that case, couldn't find witnesses. Um, the fellow that actually got shot during my preliminary hearing, he stood up in court and told the judge that I was not the person that shot him. Mm. But um, the two detectives that arrested, the officers or whatever you want to call them jokers, the two fellas that arrested me, you know, kept screaming and yelling, yes, he did, blah, 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 whatever, whatever the case is. Um, so with that, how they say um, presumption of whatever, by you being there, I have to, I have to bound this over. You know what I'm saying? But so I said, like I said, I sat in there for about 18 months for that one, the 11 months for the dope charge. Um, I did six months in the federal, in the federal um, jail and then six months at their halfway house. 
and three years on proba- on paper. So, like I said, no more than like three years behind it, behind the jail. You know what I'm saying? Jail was not something I was trying where I was trying to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were trying to stay away from there. You know what I'm saying? But there are consequences to things you do and you got to deal with it. You know what I mean? So that was cool. Like I say, I was, I mean, I was blessed to not be, to, to not be sitting in there right now. Yeah, man. Put it like that. Mm, yeah. Glad you're out to, to share your story, man. Um, tell us what it's like, you know, first day for an active gang member to enter prison. Man, this is crazy. So, you know, you see the different little shows and all this, that, and the other. And I know I had homeboys and stuff in jail, but before I went to jail, I went to jail in November 14th, 2000, my, um, 2000 is when I got sentenced and went to jail. Man, I was out here. My One of my um, partners had, like, introduced me to ecstasy before that. So, man, we was, and we used to go out every night. It, it wasn't something we didn't do every night. So we was taking two and three ecstasy pills every night, just having, just, just chilling, hanging out, partying, doing whatever the case, man. Whew, man, Dusty, when I got off that DLC bus to that thing, excuse me, looked like I weighed about 110 pounds, man. I was like, oh, man. I'm like, ooh, this ain't gonna work. Walking through the little, and then it's like, so you go to the county jail, you sit in there and for a week or two, then you go over to the diagnostic reception center, boom, you sit over there for maybe 30 days or whatever the case where they do their testing and assessments and all that. So I think when when we leave it from there, we're going to whatever facility. They take you to another facility up in Canyon City called Cell House 5. Now this is where I'm like, damn, we walk in here and it's, a, you know, uh, 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 what do I say? Um, sales on one side of the um, wall, sales on the other side going up three three stories high. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just open sales. So you see everybody and it's like, oh, this shit's crazy. This is, you know, this is, this for real. And I'm not knowing what to expect. You got people saying stuff behind their little bars, oh, fresh fish, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, whatever the fuck, this crib, this who ride. And I hear a couple of my homeboys, who ride? Yeah, what's up? I'm real, I'm real, I'm real, I'm real. I'm like, oh, I'm good. That's all. What's that? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, shit, I'm cool now. So then I don't see who's in here yet because people's in their cells. But once we get to go out to the yard, I see a couple of the homies and I'm like, oh, this is cool. It's all right. You know what I'm saying? And then um, they get to, you know, we rapping about, each, you know, different little things, and I'm telling them what what I got and what's going on. They like, ah, oh, big homie, you be out of here. You ain't finna do much of nothing. I'm like, oh yeah, hell yeah. Well, I'm trying not to get no issues with nobody because I'm ready to go right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the penitentiary's awful, man. You just around a bunch of men with different testosterone and egos and attitude and um. It's crazy, man. I'm 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 serious. And the thing about the penitentiary with me, man, I, was, I hadn't seen one of I would I, a person I, I used to call big homie or OG or you know what I'm saying things of that nature. But I seen him interacting with a big old man, and I'm like, mm. Cuz, mm. Cuz. Mm. so that kind of you know broke our little you know because man, homie, that's nasty. Mm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, I can't tell a man what to do with his situation or whatever, but that's nasty, homie. I thought, you know, older cats, t- and this is what really, like, ran me away from the homies, which I still mess with certain of the homies, but this is what kind of burns me up with the homies. The older homies always told us when we was coming up things that we don't do and things that we do do, but a lot of them did the don'ts and hardly ever did the do's. Shit, we don't do dope. We don't fuck boys. Y'all, yes, y'all do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. You know. So, I, as I'm older now, like I said, I'm 45. I was 13 back then. So I've learned a whole lot and seen a whole lot. And when I say big homies, I'm 45. Dudes that I consider my OG are 46, maybe 47. Just my partners above me because the the original rolling thirties. A- ain't none of them really older than 57-ish or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So 
And I know some of them cats out in L.A., them dudes is 70 years old. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, our uh, shit. My OG, like I said, is 45. Not that I don't respect the original 30s. I do. But some of them are just not. I mean, hey, man. They just told us a bunch of lies and things of that nature. Uh, The movie Colors was to Denver, Colorado. Man, this is funny, right? So, like I told you, I went to I went to junior high school with with the with the Damus. I snuck in the movie theater. It was on Colorado Boulevard in Alameda. I watched Colors with a dude named Dez Dog. Dez Dog is from Park Hill. He's actually from Oklahoma, but he's a blood from Park Hill. Desmond was a he's an original Deuce Nine. I think Desmond may be from CMG, and then Desmond then hooked up with the the CMGs in California and got quoted out there. So I think he's a blood from California now. But me and that dude went and watched Colors together. <laughs> oh, my mama, mama. I ain't playing. <laughs> but Colors was crazy. And this is funny. You brought up Colors. So maybe last week, maybe – Tuesday, Wednesday, I don't know, man. I really couldn't sleep. So, boom, I get up, come turn the TV back on, and Colors is on one of these weird little channels. I want to say it was maybe like Oxygen, some little weird little, because I got a fire stick. I got a little fire stick, so I get so many different channels. Man, that thing said Colors. As soon as I clicked it on there, man, the dude was telling uh, High Top, give me some of that nasty cheese you be telling your homeboys out there. (laughs) (laughs) His eye was the size of a uh, golf ball. (laughs) Oh, man, them big old dudes was whooping that boy. <laughs> man, busting him up. But I think it it, it 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 stirred up a lot, to be honest. And I, I tell people that even to this day, not even with um, the Crips and the Bloods out here, even with the gang unit we had, because I swear gang unit, them cocksuckers used to go watch that movie and act like they was the crash unit when they come to the set the next day on everything. We had a we had a set of gang unit officers, man, that they was new to that stuff too. It was new to them too. So they was like some of them was really trying to get at us, like for real. Mm. I used to be like, man, them cocksuckers go home and watch colors too, because they act like they from the crash unit <laughs> on everything. Yeah, colors was cool though. I I, I love it. I you know, now that I'm older and I know it's all, it was, you know, it's, 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 hey, the Mexicans was hard. They served shit on <laughs> rocking them. Rocking them was in there slipping. <laughs> Still in here playing this loud, bogus music yeah. and stuff with bonfires. <laughs> and here come, here, here come Frog and his little brother in them <laughs> with grenades and shit. Man, come on, man. Blowing up the spot, dog. Yeah, man. On everything. Yeah. That was funny. It's, it's funny to me now. Back then, I really didn't like it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like, nah, fuck I was that like, shit. man, they, that's how they did Rocket. And you know, he's from here. Don Cheadle's from Denver. I didn't you know, know that. what I'm saying? Didn't know that. On everything, Don Cheadle went to Denver High, Denver East High School. Yes, sir. Ah, damn, that's crazy. Yeah, he, and I remember seeing an interview with him, and he said he knew nothing about Crips and Bloods. He was like, everything that he learned trip. was just off top. That is a trip, yeah. man. That's crazy. Yeah, that movie. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm older now, and it's just it's just funny to me because I like to see it. I like to see when them dudes whoop the old high top because them dudes hit the <laughs> <laughs> in his head and <laughs> lifted his ass up, huh? Like a motherfucking yeah. rag doll. Hey, man, dude picked him up so cold. I said, "Ooh, wait, man." Dude. Yeah, and then the little skinny blood dude that had the little dirty rag on his head—he the one who hit him the hardest. I said, "Ooh, he done oh, broke yeah. all his shit." Yeah, that was some Ooh. great sound effects, dog. I hear that shit yes, to this indeed. day. Clack, yes, like, oh, shit. God damn. That, I there's a couple of movies that, there's a few movies that made me never want to go to prison. That one, because of that scene, American Me, I'm sure you know what scene <laughs> I'm talking about, <laughs> and, South, and South Central with, man, uh, those those movies, I was like, I'm, ne- I'm never going to prison, dog, and I've done everything I can to, to just stay, stay far away, man, but... Yeah, man, interesting times, dog. Yeah, that g- good movie, dog. I would love to um to 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 you, you mentioned um uh, Mexicans, Latinos. I would love to know uh, now in Denver there's Norteños and Sureños, right? I don't want to say we have north side Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? I'll say that. We have the Mexicans that live on the north side. Um 
We have Mexicans from the east side that they call themselves the Odies, OD 13s. Um, the Mexicans on the north side, I, they're, I think they're called innocent north side mafia or something like that. But as far as like south side, really, mm, I'm not going to say Denver, but Colorado, period, because we got a bunch of different little cities, right? Like, so I'm going to say, um, which one can I say? Pueblo, I would say Pueblo. Um, maybe like Grand Junction, not in the city so much what I say Southsiders, you know what I'm saying? Like the outside, diff, other little cities, you know what I mean? But because in the penitentiary, you damn sure run into them. So, and a lot of them don't be from Denver. The, 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 the pretty much the Mexicans you're going to run into in the penitentiary that are from like the city are either the oldies and like I said, the Northsiders and the Northsiders, they, they, they get, they, they, they get that smoke all the time. <laughs> they they don't last. But the biggest, I would say, the, that I know of out here, honestly, growing up, the biggest Mexican gang would be, I would say, like the GKIs. Um, I think that's the, like, gallantly, gallantly, nights insane. Um, the Inca boys, those two were, like, rival rivals, but I haven't heard anything about um, Incas in a long time, but um, we don't have, I would say, like a problem like L.A. really does with the um, black and Mexican thing on the streets too much. Now, on, in my neighborhood, we do have one set that beef with the Odies real tough. They go, they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But like I would say – where I'm from, the Trey Trays in the 30s, we've never had a, like, super conflict with the Mexicans, unless we were in the penitentiary, you know what I'm saying? But on the streets, nah. Mm. Not at all. Okay. And then, even like, even like with our gang-banging situation, I would say, um, because I know out there in Cali, them dudes be beefing with each other, and they live right next door. We don't, we've never had, like, enemies. Um, we didn't grow up on that type of stuff, but then, you know, certain things happen with certain cats from different neighborhoods, with people from our neighborhood, then that start things, and then, you know, like, we've probably had situations with every crip neighborhood that is out here, but we're not like, I would say they don't like us more than we don't like them, you know what I'm saying? Like, mortal enemies, just because we are original Eastsiders, and I'm not disrespecting none of them that claim the West Side, but like again, we don't have West Side Crips in Denver, Colorado. They don't know Crips hang on the West Side. It's all Mexicans and Asians. Real shit. Okay. <laughs> shit, I'm just saying. Let me ask you: um, any Midwest influence, like you know, Vice Lords? Hell no! GDs? All our stuff, all our stuff, come from California. Okay. <laughs> you know that's why I said I respect it. You know what I'm saying? But y'all ain't harder than us because y'all started this. You know what I'm saying? We got knuckleheads out here that do the same shit y'all do. Y'all got snitches, we got snitches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, like I said, I respect it started out that way, but when it come to, I don't know, what like Cuban them say, bow down, that's not going to happen here. <laughs> it's not coming from us. We're not bowing down to nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, and, and that's it. And they shouldn't either. But I don't think – I think my hood is harder than anybody else's because I'm from here. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. I get it totally. But my hood ain't finna go to California and think we finna set up shop and run one of these cats' neighborhoods or, and it'd be no, it, no conflict. You know what I'm saying? We ain't ever thought that way. I know how it go. And that's too far to be going to start some trouble anyway. Shit, to be trying to come back home. Yeah, right. Enemy, like if you see another blood or whatever. No, not here. Uh -huh. no, or you got Colorado got gift. color yeah. and to me, to me, I think Colorado has one of and I ain't been in no other penal system, so I can't say how they're how these other places operate. But to me, I think our system sucks when it comes to uh, a California nigga can run a penitentiary up here in Colorado. A nigga from Chicago can come up here and run a penitentiary in, in Colorado because these old fake ass tough dudes they don't 
they ain't with that when they get in that jail house. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying all, because I got some homeboys, you're not running nothing if they on the yard. You know what I'm saying? But some yards, some out-of-town cats do run the yard. Shit. And that's bogus to me. But I don't live in there. Do what y'all do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit. Mm-mm. Okay. So you, you mentioned earlier you were shot four times. Um, can you tell us, you know, maybe what, what happened and what was your scariest situation? So, and this is funny. So first time I got shot, and I'm going to just say this. I'm, let me say, let's, let's rephrase that, y'all, and listen to what they say, disclaimer. Mm-hmm. A bullet pierced my body four times, right? So let me say this. The first time, right, I'm in Park Hill messing with this chick. Um, she lives... Park Hill's the blood neighborhood. Um, she lived right around the corner from where one of the hangout houses is. You know what I'm saying? And um, all them dudes know me. I know all them. Like I said, if if if, if you was in it, everybody know each other. We're not no big old city. Um, and I lived up there. So um, on this particular day, these dudes is like, I, I man, I had a wig on. I had uh, one of my homegirls had put it in lopes. I cut up a blue rag, and each one of the, the lopes was tied with the blue rag. So that's how I'm walking around there in Park Hill. Um, so on this said day, I'm leaving from um, old girl's house. I get to the corner, boom. Car goes past me, boom. Next thing you know, all these dudes, ba 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 ba. Didn't we tell you, nigga, don't be walking around here? Ba this that. They go. I mean, so. I, I, at this time, I'm starting to pick up my pace. I got a little rusty ass 38 with me, like a cowboy thing. I, I'm picking up my pace. I look over my shoulder; they're picking up their pace. You know what I'm saying? I'm staying with my homeboy and his grandmother and his sister in Park Hill, which you know, a couple blocks away from where I was at already. Um, so, boom! I hit the alley. I start trucking it. I'm trying to get to the crib. I'm trying to get to the cop. It's at least 15. No, no bullshit because I don't tell stories. It's at, at least I'm saying at least 15 dudes behind me chasing me. So I'm trying to get this thing up out of my little uh, pocket. I hear them get off. I hear another get off. So it could have been myself. And when when the grease came, they did say something like superficial. So like maybe um, I shot myself. I said, damn, that hurt. So that was that. So when I, I got shot in my face, I was 18 years old. I was riding in a car with my mom. And um, my ex-wife, we're riding through Park Hill. Um, like again, with like I said, that's that's Park Hill's the blood neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Um, my godmother stayed in Park Hill on 24th and Niagara, so we over there just chilling, talking to her and everything. We leave. I'm going east on 24th Avenue. The next block is Newport. It's two dudes and like three, I think, if I remember right, three three females out there. It might have been four. I think it was three females. Um, them two dudes, they flamed up. Me, silly at the time, just don't know what I'm thinking. Like I said, I got my mom in my car and a girl, my girl with me. So, But I bust a left on, on Newport. I got out the car, exchanged a few words with them, blah, 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 blah. These dudes get in the car and start chasing them. I didn't want to start driving off fast. I'm in a, I'm in a, in the neighborhood. I don't want to, you know, so I'm trying not to drive off fast. They got dips at every corner. So if I'd have been hitting them dips, we'd have towed that car up already. My plan was to get down on Martin Luther King, boom, go down a couple blocks, turn, because I had some homeboys that stayed up there. I was going to shoot by their crib and, you know, see if they was there and we was going to take care of that then. But I didn't. I turned down a different street. Boom. This street got nothing but dips. I get to the end of the block. There's a there's a rec center with a big old park. It's the Martin Luther King Rec Center. Um, get to the corner. Um, I'd ask my kid's mother to hand me the thing. I got off three or four times. Boom, boom. I told my mom first before. I said, Mama, get down. Um, she handed me the thing. Boom. I got off two, three times. Boom, boom, boom. All I heard was two shots. Boom, boom. My eyes, everything just got black. Mm. I said, Mama, I'm dead. My mm. foot hit the gas. Only thing that stopped us was a tree in the park. Mm. Mm. And there was a fire station at the end of the park. So uh, my mom must have, she had to. She went down to the fire department. They got me, had me in the ambulance. And um, uh, 
the last little situation, little neighborhood stuff, had a little function in Aurora, which is my our area where we hang, whatever. Um, yeah, some things happened. Um, one of the other cribs drew down and shot like five of us, me, three or four of my homeboys, and shot his own homeboy at, at the park. That shit was crazy. And that time I got shot in my left wrist and my ankle. You know? Mm. Crazy. That stuff hurt. It's like, boy, that stuff just burning your skin up. God damn. You know, I'm more interested in, in the one where you got shot in the eye. How did, did that Right in the middle of my forehead. And I, shot, I got shot in the middle of my forehead. Yeah, but it just, it's like. <clears throat> so just great. It grazed you. I'm not saying just. Broke, Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it, just, but it. It. So it like broke that bone. It came right Ooh. out the top of my shit. It came right out the wow. top of my shit. Mm. Yep. 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 Man, listen to this crazy kid. Thing. And he was with his mom. Crazy man. man. And, and it's, it's crazy. To this day, my mom like, my mom ain't getting in the car with me. Mm. I don't blame her, but mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I ain't on that mama. I'm chilling. You know, I ain't. He said, I drive bad. That's, the, that's her <laughs> excuse. Nah, man. Ooh, crazy man. Um, let me. Oh uh, yeah, man. It, 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 like I say, man. It, it 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 goes down. I don't care where you at, man. It goes down in every state and city, man. You know what I'm saying? Just a bunch of nonsense. Mm-hmm. When, just when a bunch was, of nonsense. When was Denver at his most craziest? You know, just in the in the the, the all of the nineties, okay. <laughs> all of the nineties. You know what I'm saying? And. Maybe some of the early 2000s. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Mm. But a lot of the stuff was really going on all through them 90s. Mm. Yes, sir. If if you guys are anything like L.A., you know, we had it. It was really crazy, obviously, in the 90s to early 2000s. Then it slowed down for maybe eight or eight years or so. But now it's it's on fire. Like, it's it's I'm I'm, I'm feeling like it was back in the early 90s uh, Only even thing, and I'm man, a civilian understood we have a lot of shootings going on like for the past couple of weeks man we've been having a bunch of youngsters getting shot like we had um, a couple of weeks ago they they uh, at the high schools honestly a couple shootings at the high schools man and these it's, it, it's, it's crazy man and mm-hmm. you know I did non, I did non-profit stuff for almost 20 years, man. And even before I even, like I used to coach a football and a basketball team for the same Red Shield, the community center. You know what I'm saying? That's how I end up, <clears throat> excuse me. That's how I end up catching my federal case with a pistol. I took a, I took a, a 44 caliber pistol, long, sweet as I don't know what, mm. from a 14 year old kid. And when I left the park, I got pulled over by the police, had that gun. I went to jail. Mm. Um, I went to, I was going to the state court for maybe eight, nine months. I, I go to court one day, it's two white men in the court and outside the court. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking for my lawyer, honestly, like, where's this man at? This white dude walked up on me. He was like, uh, is your name Gerald Wright? I'm like, yeah, what's up? And I'm thinking maybe they with the lawyer, like some investigators or something. And he done sent them just as, you know, like he'll be late. Man, this dude with this badge album was like, I'm Agent Traver with the ATF. You have a Marshall hold, hold or warrant? I said, no, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Mm. Shit, my lawyer ain't said nothing like that. So sure enough, when he came up there, though, they said it to him. and Yep, yep, yep. Mm. Went on ahead and took me to them little people. I said, this ain't this a bitch. But and like I said, it, it, it could have got worse. I could It could have got worse. I got a year and a day for that because – like I said, when all this court and everything came and blah, 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 they talked to the little fella and talked to his mom. I guess I would say they was I don't know if they was feeling sympathy or like, oh, he was trying. But I'm like, shit, if I wouldn't have took it, then shit. And he did something with it, then y'all would have looked at me even crazier. You know what I'm saying? So what is it? Let him keep it or take it. Shit. The hell? Mm. But, man, on everything, it was, yeah, mm. just crazy. Yeah, man. My guess you mentioned you were uh, you were uh, joined the gang at thirteen, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, if you could talk to a thirteen year old you, what would you tell him? Listen to your mama, respect your mama and your daddy. Um, don't be the throwaway. 
You know what I'm saying? Don't be the throwaway. I talk to youngsters now, and I tell them the same thing. And I told a little dude that he was like, "What that? you mean?" Though? Yeah, tell me what you mean by that. Yeah. You, so, so you know how, uh, like, and I'm doing the I'm doing the quotation fingers as I say mm-hmm. this. You know how gangsters got a throwaway pistol. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't be the throwaway, little homie. Gotcha. <laughs> you know the what I'm saying? The don't, time for some bullshit. Gotcha. don't be the throwaway, little homie. Mm. You, you feel me? That's deep. Real shit. Don't be the throwaway. That's deep, man. That's that's probably one of the deepest things I've heard. Don't be the throwaway. Damn. Please. <laughs> don't be the throwaway. Please. I promise you. Damn. There's a lot of people right now doing life in prison because they were the throwaway. On everything. On everything. It's funny, man. I know you be talking to people and y'all be talking about that dude, Charleston White, man. That is that dude is like Talk to me man, about your thoughts on Charleston White. Shit, I got I got dude's time. <laughs> dude's a cocksucker, man. It's like when I first heard of him and listened to him, I was like, Hell yeah, if he doing that for the kids, that nigga's all right. He's involved. He's helping them youngsters out. But then I hear him say some other stuff like, yeah, fuck all you scribes and crabs, nigga, I'll tell the police. I said, huh? Damn, you sound just like him. That was uh, scary, too. <laughs> un- unsubscribe, nigga. What you, yo tough ass, you gonna call the police? Yeah, fuck all y'all niggas. I'm like, hold up, man, this dude here. Something's wrong with that brother. I know attention is a hell of a drug, but golly, that nigga gonna overdose on attention. It's the, wrong, it's the wrong attention, that man. Stuff is, you, it's a certain way you can you 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 can come at people, and you know what I'm saying. You can't man. be disrespecting them dudes like that, man. man. Some of them dudes, but man, what? I've been I, like I said, I, I've been knowing my homeboys and banging my neighborhood over 30 years. I love the I love the set, not a bunch of the cats in the set, but you can't disrespect mine either like that, man. You're a disrespectful dude, disrespecting dead people and. It's like, man, yeah. dude, dude is a goofy ass. It's a bunch of them, though, Dusty. I, I, it's a bunch of them. I used YouTube, to listen. There's a bunch of them. I, man, I, I like yeah. Spider a lot, but then when he be having that weird ass nigga Nina boy on there, I'll be like, you sound so, yo, yo conversation is so dumb. You sound as bad as C-Mac. Because <laughs> that's all I do is watch YouTube and TikTok all day. So that's all I can talk about is them funny niggas that be on there. And they are funny. What are your thoughts Career. on C Mac? C Mac, man, he, uh, 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 man, is is. I don't know how old the fella is, but like I said, I'm 45. I used to try and talk like that when I was 13 and 14. You know what I'm saying? And I never, I, I never um, forgot to misplace a B with a C like he does. I'll be on his helmet sometimes. I'll be telling him, homie, you sound real goofy. Your cripping is tacky, my nigga. You're trying to use all C's, but then you slip up with a B here and there. And then one day, so he been working on it. I told him the other day, I said, I see you trying, cuz. I said, but you still sound dumb. <laughs> that shit is crazy. But it really drove me crazy when he had the little kid on there. I'm like, homie, don't bring them kids into this dumbass shit the way you be talking and all this weird shit. We, we trying to keep the kids far away from any parts of that. Any parts of that. You know what I'm saying? And here you is, you program five, little fat hood, and oh, God, ah, you better eat that turkey. I was like, yeah, man, I'll be wanting to reach through my little phone and wish I can choke him in it so he can sound like a man or something around here. But I ain't got no disrespect to do it. It's just some of the shit he be doing is go- real goofy to me. Do what you do, man. Believe them kids and stuff. But when you doing that shit, don't have that little fella over there with you. Shit, that's real. That's that's silly to me. And like the white boy, what the white boy milk say? Because I think he's goofy as fuck too, old scary ass. But like you said, man, you 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 can't talk like a normal person when you got these kids in your presence. You know what I'm saying? That shit is dumb as hell. A lot of them YouTube dudes, man, are silly. I'm so serious. I'll be like, damn, I ain't found one yet besides Kev Mac. You know what I'm saying? That that really don't be on the bullshit or like some goofy shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's probably a lot I ain't tapped into, but I'll be into the gang shit. I'll be wanting to see what everybody else's different little gang stuff is because everybody's going through the same shit right now. Disrespectful ass youngsters everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, Kev Mac is the GOAT, man. He definitely uh, Yeah, he's the truth. I really is. I really like I dig him on everything. I swear. I'll be like, oh man. 
oh man, because I, I be I, it just, it, it's reminiscing. I'm reminiscing like, damn man, oh I remember, man, I know that nigga was hard. This one dude he did Hawkeye. I said I know Hawkeye with that shit, <laughs> straight up. But yeah, man, it's yeah. like I said, it's it's it is what it is. It's life, man, and I'm just trying to do better. And the crazy thing is, I've been in Colorado 45 years. I, I, I went to different places and did this thing, you know, just to see other places. But I'm trying to move away from around here. Shit mm-hmm. costs too much. Um, things is going up. It's getting crowded. Everybody coming here for whatever the reason is. Everybody from California is going to there. Man, I'm out of here. I'm mm-hmm. finna bounce. I'm, I'm finna scoot and try something different. They say you got to step out and see. I'm from the box state, Colorado, shaped like a box. So I say I got to step out of my box and go try mm-hmm. and figure it out somewhere else for a minute. Mm-hmm. You guys seeing a lot of gentrification out there? What? Mm, talk to me. What? Man, the area, the neighborhood I grew up in, which we call the East Side. Man, them white folks, boy, they love them brick little dogs now, huh? What? And, hey, and the crazy thing, I'm gonna say this: I've seen some little dogs, but some of them white women walking around there with pit bulls. Like I wish one of you <laughs> niggas would run up on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wish you would. I got, I got this pit over here, nigga. Run up on me if you want to, and I'm dead serious. I am not playing. I believe you. I'm. Uh, I'm I'm like what? Yeah, there are certain parts of L.A. There are certain parts of L.A. out here that three years ago I would I wouldn't have walked at past seven p.m. I wouldn't be walking down the street. Now it's filled with white people with their little dogs and their lattes. Man, I'm like, yes, sir. damn, man. Three years yes, ago I would never sir. set foot in this fucking area, man. They built a and stadium see, and now everything goes up. And it's crazy because like where we grew up at, like in our little neighborhood, it's a bunch of uh breweries now you know what i'm saying they got a bunch of the breweries the new hipster they, shit right yes sir you know what i'm saying so yeah they not playing but you know a lot of people got frustrated with me because i'm like i don't really have a problem with the neighborhood looking good shit why would you want to live in I'm a city or somewhere I, 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 own my home. Look, I own my you know home and saying? i want my shit to look nice so i'm not even down That's with it ab- absolutely when, when i talk you know about gentrification if i may because i do talk about this on my my show a lot uh, my my thing is uh, people of color we need to stop selling so quickly we man, need to stop so you took, man you took it right out of my yeah, mouth man, cause look all right here's the deal dog grandma buys the house let's say 40 40 years ago right for fifty thousand dollars now on, it's 2021 20, the house is worth Two hundred and fifty thousand, four hundred thousand, or whatever. Grandma dies. Now the cousins want to say, you know what? Let's just get this check. Let's go on and sell this motherfucker. Now the house that's been in in the in the city for forty years. Now the Asians are coming in, not knocking it. I'm just saying they know the game. The Jewish okay, people are coming understood. in. The white folks are coming in. You know what I'm saying? Man. So we need to not sell so fast. That's my thing, man. And see, you know what happened out here with a lot of the homes because a lot of my partners' parents and grandparents own homes on the east side and things of this nature, but the kids. So when 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 when, when Mama passed on, uh-huh. and now the, the crib is the kids, yeah. um, that little crack then tore it. That little that little crack then tore their ass up for so long. These few years now, they like somebody come in and offer them a good twenty twenty five thousand. Here yeah. we just gonna y'all, they 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 take that thinking they finna move somewhere else and do better, and they worse off now for a little for a little piece of change. And now that house down there is worth seven hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Facts, man. What facts? Like what, man? Listen, listen to what we're saying, People, man. My mama got a corner house in Park Hill, big old, nice, nice, nice brick house. Man, somebody put something in her thing every all, in the mailbox all the time. All the time. Talking about yep, oh, my man. mom be trying to, I she be trying to all the time. She trying to get to the mailbox and open the door and chase the people like who didn't, who who put it in the mailbox. Get your man. ass from over here. I'm in L.A. I'm 40 minutes from the mountains, 13 minutes from the beach, you know, 45 minutes from the desert. You know what I'm saying? I, and, and I get that shit all the time. And I don't even live in a, you know, I live in a cool neighborhood or whatever, but it's not like yeah. it's a fat, outstanding fucking neighborhood. But, yeah, man, it's, they they want us. Yeah, it's, 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 it's all a plan. That's all I'm going to say. We ain't going to get into our conspiracy shit because it's not a conspiracy. It's just real shit. We need to stop Absolutely. selling so fast, and we need to support each other. That's how I'm, I'm going to get off my high horse. Yo, um, man, who right? It's been a pleasure talking to you, man. It's been almost an hour, dog, and I enjoyed the conversation. Um, hey, you as well, man. For re- Hey, this is therapy for me, uh, man, on everything. I this is my therapy, bro. I love hearing that, man. I would love to 
tap in maybe every thing. couple of months, few months, and have you on yeah, again. I'll see, hey, I'll see I know we just hit not. the. I know we just hit probably the tip of the iceberg, man. I would love to yes, delve sir. more into your prison life and things like that, and and hopefully detour some of these kids from making some bad decisions that'll lead them there. But um, is there any, anybody you want to give any shout outs to or anything, man? The floor is yours, man. Man, I ain't giving none of these bums no shout That's out, man. Man, I, man, I love when people do that shit. And <laughs> hey, most, yeah, I'm usually I'm here for three to, minutes. For motherfuckers I'm going to give a shout out to everybody. I'm going to give a shout out to you and everybody that you done had on your show. That's who I'm going <laughs> to give a shout out to on everything. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace.